again, it's very, very interesting to see that this was written by AI. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is a very special video because we are going to do a challenge which will be chat GTP versus humans. So I will be challenging the AI to beat me in coding. So we will create a task, I will write the code and then I will ask the same question or I will ask the AI to write the same code. So we will be having three different tasks Every task, I will be writing the code myself, and then we will ask the GTP or the AI to write the code and see and compare the results. So, uh, spoiler alert, you can see this code was generated by AI. It is really good, and we will see how well it performs in different tasks. So, we will have three different tasks easier harder very hard. So, we will see how well it performs. So, stay tuned till the end, and let's get started. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, do check out our premium courses that are available on our CVZone platform. Links are in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. Round one. So the first task is very simple. We are going to ask the computer to actually generate a grayscale image. So we are going to input an image, it will convert it into grayscale and it would send it back. So we are going to do it first and let's see how that goes. So our code is complete. You can see we have imported OpenCV library and then we are converting BGR to gray. This is a function which is taking input as the image and it is directly returning our gray image. So we are not having any extra steps. So then we have our image being imported, which is, which is murtaza.jpg. And then we have image to gray. We are converting the image. Then we are writing, uh, the, we are showing the main image and then we are showing the gray image and then we are waiting for the user input. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. And there you go. So here we have the gray image and here we have the original colored image. So now that this works, let's go ahead and see what ChatGPT can do. So this is our program ChatGPT. And this is not actually ChatGTP. It is a better version of ChatGTP, which is OpenAI. Uh, this was released before the ChatGTP. Uh, which is a lighter version of this. So just to make sure that we get the best results, we are going to use OpenAI. Both of them are pretty much same, but OpenAI is a bit better than ChatGTP. So let's go ahead and try it out. So what exactly are we going to write? So let's, let's see what it does by default. I, I want to see what exactly will it do. So what we'll do is we'll just tell it to write a code that will convert an image to grayscale. We will not specify any libraries. We will not specify image or webcam or whatever the case is. We will simply write, write a function to convert a colored image to gray scale. So let's see what it does because right now we did not specify any library. We did not specify any programming language. So it will be interesting to see what language does it grab by default. Uh, colored image to a grayscale. Okay, a grayscale. <laughs> Let's see what happens. There you go. We have a function uh, convert to grayscale. We are taking input as the image. So def over here tells us that it is using Python by default which is great to see. Convert to grayscale by looping each pixel and setting RGB values to the same value. So image.width, image.height, and it is looping and going through, okay. So it, it is taking all the pixel values and converting them one by one. So this is good, but what we want is using OpenCV. So what we are going to do, we are going to define here using open cv so let's run that and we know that it is using python by default so we don't have to worry about that 
So th this basically tells us that most probably Python is the most used language uh, when it comes to OpenCV or computer vision. So it says convert to grayscale image file, uh, image equals CV2 IM read, okay, gray image, CVT color, IM writes, okay, it is returning and it's writing it. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and try it out. So import CV2. We are going to go to our PyCharm project. And here we are going to create a new folder and we are going to say gray scale. So we will put the main as well over here. We are going to rename it and rename, let's say we'll call it uh, gray scale underscore me and then we are going to write a new file and we are going to say gray scale underscore AI so let's put it down and let's see what happens so import CV2 and now we just have to call it it didn't actually call the function so let's let's call it we will write convert to grayscale and the image file is basically murtaza.jpg this we are doing this because now it's in the parent folder so we have to go back uh, one step so convert to grayscale and it should save the file uh, grayscale image.jpg so let's see if it works properly so we are getting an error so image BGR, oh, it's running me, my bad. We have to run AI. Uh, here, I guess we have to change something. Why did it give an error? Return CVD color, BGR to gray, empty. Uh, it's unable to find the image. I'm not sure why, because it's right there and it has changed it. Anyways, let's try to run this first. And there you go it generated a grayscale image and there it is so this is very very interesting because the ai has generated this result all we had to do was call the function actually let's try it out let's try to write the complete code so that it calls the function as well so let's see what kind of change do we need so what exactly can we write write a function to convert a colored image to grayscale using OpenCV and call the function um, to show an example. Let's try that out. Uh, we will remove this and we will hit submit. Okay, there you go. So import CV2, import NumPy as NP. Okay, this is interesting because it did not do that earlier. Then, okay, let's just copy it. Why are we just reading it here? Uh, we can we can do uh, the second attempt for AI. So grayscale underscore AI underscore two, or let's say V2, version two. Okay. So import CV2, import NumPy as NP. Now this is interesting because it's not actually using NumPy, but it has imported NumPy for some reason. Uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, when everybody is doing something and you see the code written next to it. So most of the time, computer vision, when you're using, uh, it will import CV2 and then it will import NumPy. So I guess it has learned that uh, somehow it's relevant and we have to import both of them, even though it's not using it. So import NumPy as NP, then we have convert to gray. We have the image input and image gray equals CV2 image CVD color BGR, very good. And we are returning gray image. So here it says read an image. Okay, so this is very interesting. I think the computer gets a plus point because of this, because it has written the comments as well. So it says read an image. So image is CV2 IM read image.jpg. Convert the image to grayscale, gray image equals convert to gray. Display the grayscale image, uh, CV2 grayscale image. The naming itself is actually very good as well. 
then gray underscore image it is using the same convention of um, what do you call python which is camel casing oh, sorry it's not camel case snake casing uh, the reason we use camel casing is because opencv is is um, uh, i i think the wrapper for this is in java uh, the reason we use camel casing with opencv is most of the time because uh, it uses the JavaScript version, which uses camel casing. So we are using the same thing over here. But I guess uh, here it's using snake casing, which is good, which is good to see. CV2 IM show grayscale image, gray image, and CV2 weight key zero, and CV2 destroy all windows. So in, in some sense, it is better than what I wrote because I, I didn't put the comments because it's simple. We don't need actual comments. But in in a way, it actually wrote destroy all windows, which I don't usually write, but it has written it, which is good. So let's try to run it and we will change this to murtaza.jpg and we will run the version 2 and let's see how it performs. Okay, there's an error because we did not go back. Let's run that. And there you go. So it is giving us the grayscale image. Again, it's very, very interesting to see that this was written by AI. And when I ran my own code, I did not feel anything different. But when I run this code and I see that AI has generated this, that is just amazing. So I would give one point to myself and I will give one point to chat GTP or AI as well. So I, I would say this is a tie round because both of us did a good job. So my job so far is safe. So far, only one down. Round two. So let's go ahead and go to the second one. We are going to take it up a notch and we are going to try to find colors in images. So here we are going to say, uh, no, not the script. We are going to create a directory. We are going to say color. So we will right click and we will create a new file. We will write color underscore me. And here we are going to write the code to find a color. So now finding colors is interesting. And uh, since I have written a lot of code around it, I'm going to use a shortcut to write in a few lines of code. We will use color detection. At the back end, it will be using OpenCV, but at the front end, we will be using CV zone to actually find the color. So it will be a very short code. So our task will be to try to find the red color. So here we have a red object. I also have this car. So we will see if we can find the red color. And as you can see, the chair behind me also has some red. So we will see how well can we find it. So let's go ahead and I will go ahead and write the code and then we will ask ChatGTP to write the code for us. So now the code is complete and let's go ahead and try it out. So we will be using the color red. There you go. So you can see already there's some red. Now it is capturing my skin a little bit red as well. We can fix that later on. But this is the sample. Here we have the red color being detected properly. Then we also have this car. As you can see, it's quite good. Well, of course it can be improved, but so far this is the code that we have written again it is using the cv zone package if you go to the color finder uh, you can see down here this is the basic code which is uh, using hsv color space and you have the lower and the upper limit it creates a mask out of that and then it returns us the mask and the colored image so i believe if we ask chat gtp most probably it will use this method to actually convert. So at the back end, it is pretty much the same thing. So let's go ahead and try it out. So here we are going to delete this and we will write a function to convert a colored or the write a function to find 
red color in a open open CV colored image and call the function to show an example uh, write a function to find red color in open CV colored image and call the function to show an example yeah I think that should be good let's run that So there you go, it is using BGR to HSV. It is using the upper and lower range. Oh, it is also using the upper and the lower limit of red because red specifically in the spectrum has two ranges. It is at the far end and it is at the very beginning as well. So it is using both those red, which is very impressive. Okay, it has stopped because the tokens or the maximum length has reached we can submit again and it will continue from there so return and this and this and that okay so let's take all of that now this is for the image uh, we will ask it to do for the webcam as well but for now we have the image part so let's go ahead and test that out so we can write here python color underscore ai uh, ai underscore image Let's test it out with the image first and then we can go to the webcam. Again, something that I really admire is that it is using uh, comments uh, as it goes along. So let's start, import CV2, import NumPy. So this time it imported NumPy, but I guess it is using as well because we are creating some arrays for that. That's good. Function to find the red color in OpenCV colored image. I'm, I'm very impressed. Red color. So image, we are in, uh, inputting the image, convert BGR to HSV. Now this is very interesting because normal convention is RGB, but OpenCV uses BGR and it has recognized that, that OpenCV uses BGR and it has written that in the comments properly as well. So very impressive. HSV, CV2, CVT color, image, CVT color, um, color BGR to HSV. So if we, if we go to our color module, uh, the, it, at the back end, it's pretty much doing the same thing. So here you can see, so this is the line of code, color BGR to HSV. It is using here BGR to HSV, very good. Range for lower red. So you have a NumPy array, NumPy array, and then you use the in range function to actually find the mask. So let's see what we did. So lower limit, upper limits, array, array. And then we are using the in range function to find the lower and upper and create a mask out of that. Amazing. So uh, red, upper red, and lower red. And here is for the upper red, which is, uh, the naming is not very good because it is confusing. Uh, if you just see it, it will look like um, it's talking about the same red, but if you don't know about the spectrum, so the naming is a little bit confusing, but overall it's very good. <clears throat> then it's adding the mask red, red plus red. So that is very good. And bitwise mask and original image. So this is how it's giving us the original image. Okay, so then it's also giving us an example, read an image. So we will write here, we have an image here with uh, called triangles and it has this red in it. So let's try that out. Uh, we will go back and we'll write triangles.png. And then we have the red image equals red color image. This is where we call the function and show an example. <laughs> it is writing the comments. That's very impressive. CV2, I am sure red image, red image, CV2.waitkey, destroy all windows. I'm really impressed. Let's run that. And there you go. I'm, I'm really impressed. So it is detecting the color for us and it is showing us the red in that image. That is amazing. Let me let me try out uh, my other image, which is murtaza.jpg. Uh, let's see if we have any red in it. I'm not sure. Uh, there is some red. <laughs> okay, my lips are red, and there's some red on the side. Oh, this is for the wallpaper on the uh, the the car on the wallpaper is red. 
Okay, so this is good. Um, let me try to find any other image. Um, if we can find something that has red in it, we can test it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I have something interesting. So I have this setup uh, from a while back. I, I keep changing my setups. I am a bit obsessed. So let, let's just put it outside. Maybe we'll use it later as well. Let's call it red.jpg and we can remove that and simply write red. So this will be interesting to see because there's a lot of red and black in it. Okay, so, okay, this is really big. Uh, let's just uh, scale it down a little bit. So only when it's showing the image. So here we can just uh, make it smaller, cb2.resize will give in the red image, red underscore image. And uh, we don't want to scale it based on values. We don't want output and we want 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 as the scale. And we will just use the red image convention again. So let's run that again. So it will be easier for us to see. Even at 0 0.5, it's really big. So let's make it 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. Uh, let's just keep with the convention. There you go. So let's stop that and run it. There you go. So this is how good it is. It is able to find all these different reds. You can see it is very impressive how it has uh, captured it. But again, you can see there's a little bit of brown as well. Uh, we had the same issue because red and brown they are very close to each other so that's why sometimes it overlaps and when it don't, when it comes to color detection especially when the lighting changes a bit uh, the brown becomes red the red becomes brown and stuff like that okay so this is very impressive i would say it is very well organized the 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 comments are very well written uh, only the naming is a little bit bad because uh, it is using two of the same uh, values, the same names. Otherwise, I would say it is very professional and it is very well written. And again, uh, I would say I, I did not write bad code as well. It's it's not that bad, uh, but I'm using a, a, a different library. So I would give one one again. So it is doing a good job. We are able to find the color as well. The AI is able to find the color. I would say it's a win-win one one. Round three. So now we will head on to the part or the task number three, which is finding triangles. So we are going to input an image and we are going to find triangles in that image. So let's go ahead. So the triangle code is now complete and as you can see we have a function for pre-processing we are importing all the libraries we are using cvzone we are using opencv and we are using numpy as well so here in the pre-process we are basically converting the image into grayscale then we are using gaussian blur uh, then we are using the kenny edge detector and then we are dilating it because it was not giving us good results so we had to dilate it so that the edges that are open, they get closed and it is a thick line so that it is easy to detect uh, the number of contours or the number of edges, corner points it has. So we are returning the image pre-processed. Here we are calling, uh, we are importing our image triangles. So this is our image triangles. And then we have the pre-process pre-processing of the image we are calling the function and then after that we are finding the contours using the cv zone function uh, which is very simple you just have to give in the pre-processed image and the actual image you give in the minimum area and the filter number is basically the number of corner points it should have so triangle has three corner points so we are giving in three so if it's anything else it will not detect that then uh, we are 
showing the actual image we are also showing the pre-processed image and we are also showing the final result which is the image contours so let's go ahead and try it out so let's right click and triangle so this is the main image triangle and then we have the pre-processed image you can see it is detected very well and then we have the uh, triangles that are actually found so that's how uh, we can find it so you can see after some fine tuning it actually gives you quite good results so let's go ahead and ask the chat GTP to actually write the code for us. And this will be very interesting to see what happens because it is not very straightforward. It is a little bit complicated. So let's go ahead and see. So we are going to remove the previous one and we are going to write, write a function to find triangles in an open CV colored image. and call the function to show an example. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens. It's converting to gray, it's applying the edge detector, it is using fine contours, it's looping through the contours. I, I'm, I'm really impressed. Okay, so let's hit the submit button again and let's see if it continues. Okay, so it is done within a few seconds. Okay, so let's copy that and we are going to go back to our project. Triangles, right click, Python file, triangles, underscore AI. We'll paste it and any errors? No. Okay, so here again, we can see it imported NumPy, but it did not actually use it. So that's kind of funny. Uh, then we have the uh, the function find triangles. We are inputting an image, convert the image to grayscale. That is exactly what we did here. Then uh, apply edge detection. So we are using Canny. They did not blur, so that's fine. Let's see how that goes. Uh, then find contours. So they are using the direct function for find contours, uh, contours hierarchy, and then find contour edges. It is also giving us the family and the chain approximation and then loop over the contours. So it will go through all the contours. So at the back end, if I show you the find contours function, it will actually doing the same thing. So here you can see it's using CV2 find contours and it is using this. And then uh, you can see it is looping through all the contours and it is checking for the, the area and the approximation. So here, I believe the area will not be considered because we didn't ask it for the area. So here, the approximation is basically the number of uh, corner points it has. So the length of the approximation, if it's three, then it's a triangle. So that it has detected properly. So this is for the AI. So uh, that's, that's very well. And uh, then it is drawing the contour and then it is showing the image, triangles image and weight key is zero. So it is showing it within the function, which is not very great, but for, for the purpose of it, we can accept it. Okay, so let's remove that. And we are going to write triangles.png and let's see how well it performs. So let's go ahead and run it. And there we have an error. So not enough values to unpack. Now, this is a problem. And uh, this problem is because of the version numbers. And earlier it used to be like that, but now it's like this. So there are two values that are returned now. Earlier they used to return three values. So it's okay, we can, we can ignore that. Let's run that again. And there you go. OMG, there you go. So as you can see right at the start, it's detected very well and it is giving us the output now it's not giving us the bounding boxes of those and we didn't ask for it we just asked for the triangles that was something extra that we did by default but here you can see it did not detect two triangles so i would say this is a win i would say i will definitely give it one point um, again i will give myself one point as well because i want to keep my job but i would definitely give 
open uh, ai or chat gtp 1 point as well now um you can you can improve the pre-processing you can actually I, I believe the the bigger value here might be the problem let's let's try to fix that and let's see if it can detect uh no it did not detect still so i believe uh the we can we can show the pre-processed image here right after so we can see what exactly is the problem because mostly it is of the pre-processed image so here we have the edges so yeah you can see there's small gaps here and there so that's why it might be causing this issue so what we can do is we can take the code from uh, here we can dilate it and see if it works then I, I believe it will work so here we can put edges in here and we can put in the image pre-processed here so let's run that again and before we send it we are going to check out the image pre so I'm ruining the code just to make it better okay there you go so now it is detecting and it's is good but here you can see there's an overlap uh, there's an overlap here so it's detecting them as two I believe the others some of them are also detected as two or is it one no so this is a pre-processed image now the, the the boxes are closed and the triangles are closed so again we did some tuning as well and I would expect the same from the AI so it cannot r uh, work right off the bat so I would say this is a very good win and it works very well I, I'm, I'm going to remove this part just to store what the AI did which is very amazing so I will I will share all this code um, somewhere so that you can see what exactly was the difference so the scores are actually level and uh, three for the humans and three for the AI. So it is quite interesting to see and it is quite scary as well because it is able to do a lot of things that humans were good at. Now, if the coding part is actually solved and we are able to get very specific tasks as well, because these are a bit journal um, ideas, these are journal coding problems, but if we are able to get very specific problems and we are able to get very specific answer to those specific problems, then it will be very likely that it will replace a lot of different jobs. So already content writing is changing a lot and now you can just type in some Thing and it will give you a complete blog or an essay about it you can pretty much write a book uh, using this technology so coding is no different you can actually write a lot of different code using this technology now one thing that I would recommend if you are using open AI or any other tool is that not to give it generic questions so what do I mean by that is that if you wanted to for example write a blog on computer vision so don't just ask it to write a 1000 words blog on computer vision create subtopics and ask it to generate those subtopics and then combine it to create a complete essay or an article so that's how uh, you can basically use it in a more efficient way so for example you can say uh, what is computer vision uh, a little history of computer vision then uh, the current situation of applications of computer vision and then the future of computer vision so these can be subcategories which you can use to generate the content because if you give it a direct a generic question it will be very very vague in terms of direction so you have to give it a little bit of direction so for example you can't just say write a code that will do this you have to be a little bit specific about the libraries a little bit specific about the language uh, in our case OpenCV the uh, Python is pretty much the most used language that's why it is using that by default but uh, if you're using any other coding problems you might need to specify the language as well but it is very scary where this is heady uh, where this is heading and it is quite um, exciting as well because you can use it as a tool to 10x your productivity and 10x your results
So it will be interesting to see how I will be using this. And I'm thinking of using this to write some code as well. So uh, let's see how it works out. I, I might update and uh, tell you guys uh, if it's worth trying to write longer codes or not. But do share your experiences as well. I would love to see what did you generate. And specifically in terms of computer vision, what were you able to generate using this AI technology? So this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, share it with your friends and I will see you in the next one.